Hello everyone. Hope your Tuesday is going well. It's sure a beautiful day out there. Uh, just had a good lunch with the peacemakers and a uh, good time with them as they're uh, eating here on Tuesdays and uh, they, they meet to do their, their uh, quilting and crafts and things and then they have lunch together and they invite me and it's a great time. We have a great, great time doing that and some good food and that's, that's what's great. Uh, well, we want to jump back into this uh, short little series. It'll take us to, uh, well, we'll do it again tomorrow, and then we're going to begin uh, sort of a Lenten series as we head towards Easter. But uh, we're sort of finishing up our 21 days of, of prayer. Uh, this little series is called The Freedom of Prayer, and uh, uh, I, I really like this. It, it, there's some good sort of unique. We talked about yesterday the idea of you know, if you don't pray, you're sort of, you're, you, you, there's a good chance you'll waste your time by doing things that, uh, you know, you don't need to do. You know, the Lord in prayer can lead you in a different path the way that you need to go. And, and just a unique perspective there. And I, I like that. And, and today's is uh, uh, kind of like that. Although I've talked a lot about this, I think this is one of the biggest things in prayer that, uh, if, if we could all just kind of grasp this, this idea, uh, I think it would help us a lot. I try to do that in my, do this in my life uh, uh, regularly, all the time. Uh, you know, I, I, the idea being we, we sort of live, well, the title of this is Living Experience of Prayer. And the idea is prayer is just a part of the fabric of our life, of everything. We're constantly connected with the Lord in in. Um, so that we can, our hearts can can uh, mouth prayers to the Lord uh, at any moment, in any time, and and uh, you know, really allowing the Lord to be an integral part of our our life. I think the the scripture passages they have here kind of uh, relate to that. The the first one is Psalm one hundred and five uh, verses one to five. It says, "Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done, sing to Him." Sing praise to him, tell of all of his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the earth, the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he's pronounced. Seek his face always. Constantly be in communication with the Lord, letting him speak to you. And related to that is 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And we've looked at some of these, this, this one in particular, earlier in this series, but uh, the idea is says prayer, conti pray continually. And, and I think it's getting at this idea of just constantly being in communication with, with the Lord and letting him uh, speak into our heart and lives in, in ways that, you know, just, just on a daily basis, moment by moment basis. Uh, then Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Uh, you know, again, the idea just being you need to know something. You need to... You know, if you have a question in your heart, if there's some wisdom you need of how to handle a situation, whatever, just just present that to the Lord. He'll help uh, help guide you in that. The last one is Colossians 4.2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Uh, again, the Lord's always with us. I said that Sunday. The Lord's always near. The question is whether we are going to be connected to Him and, and if we're going to be watchful and thankful for for his presence uh, in our life. Well, let's get to the devotional. It begins like this. Uh, I thought this was interesting. He says, I, I recently began reading a book that is dramatically changing and transforming my prayer life. It makes me want to read this book. It's, it's called In the Way of, of a Pilgrim, an anonymous work from the 19th century that has become a modern spiritual classic. We meet a pilgrim on the journey of life who is profoundly struck by a passage of scripture that he hears read in a church on a Sunday, specifically uh, Paul's exhortation to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Uh, the man is so taken by his charge and his uh, own lack of understanding of how anyone can possibly live a life of constant prayer that he makes it his life's mission to seek out wisdom from others who have learned to pray and live their life in constant communion with God. Uh, that, that's really good. I, it's interesting. I did a little research on this, this little book and because, uh, I, I, like I said, I'd, I'd like to read it. One of the things about it I, I found, it's kind of uh, interesting, this, this, these days, it, it's, a, it's actually a Russian book. 
they're not real sure who it's sort of anonymous is the, the not real sure exactly who the author is. They've traced it back to maybe one of a couple of guys who are both Russians. Uh, and, and in the book, the, the, this pilgrim is, it treks through uh, part of Ukraine and then into Russia and Siberia, uh, which is part of Russia now. Uh, but but it, it kind of interesting, you know, the, the involvement of Ukraine and, and Russia uh, in this in this story, uh, this this uh, you know the story of a pilgrim who who, who seeks to know how to pray, uh, how to pray you know without ceasing, and what it means. He he goes looking for those that can help him with that. Uh, let me keep going with the devotions as though much could be said about this man's journey with wisdom and insight dripping like sweet honey from its each page. Uh, that, that makes me want to read it all the more, right? It's dripping like sweet honey from each page. I was especially struck by his comments on the sermons he had heard on the topic of prayer. As a pastor, my ears perked up at that point, yet his critique and assessment of sermons stung as it felt remarkably timely and current even hundreds of years later. He said, to tell the truth, although... Uh, much has been preached on prayer and much is written about it in the teaching of various writers. They are better equipped to preach without the elements that con constitute prayer than about the very essence of it because their thoughts are mostly are based mostly on speculation and deliberations of natural reason rather than on a living experience of prayer. Uh, in other words, the idea being that sort of we, we well, it goes into this in the next, next uh, paragraph, but uh, the idea being often we we know how to talk about prayer, we know how to teach prayer, we know how we know elements. You know, we talked about uh, you know Max Lucado talked about that that little pocket prayer that you can pull out. And the problem is the reality is we 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 don't talk as much about the experience of prayer, what it means to to actually pray and 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 have that connection with with the Lord, which is so crucial. That's really what's most important. Now, now, like I said, I, I like the idea. Max Lucado's you know, his little pocket prayer that has the ability to to uh, help us get there. But but the key, the focus can't be on sort of the pocket prayer, uh, the Lord's prayer. You know, it isn't about the Lord's prayer. It's about sort of this this. Uh, uh, well, it's sort of a formula, but it's not in the sense of of it being about the formula. It, it's about the Lord. It's about our connection to Him that we develop through through prayer. Uh, let me keep going here. It says, really, words pierce my own heart so deeply. How easy it is to preach words that are objectively true, yet rarely embodied. And preacher or not, how often do we all live with a certain disconnect between what we know and how we live, what we profess, and who we are becoming in Christ? Like this pilgrim of old, I long to not simply use my God-given reason to think about the world and speculate on this or that truth, but to know in my bones what it means to have a living experience of prayer. So we, we don't, it's not about the formula, it's about the relationship. It, it's about, and, and not just about the relationship, but it's, it's, it's not about, you know, our being able to talk about prayer, our being able to talk about the Bible, uh, you know, maybe me as a, a, a preacher, not, it's not about my ability to preach and, and all and come up with, you know, Sunday I had like 10 points. But but it's not about that. It's about how we take those things and apply them to our life, and then they have to our hearts, and then it it works its way out. It's 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 about the well, as he says here, a living experience of prayer. Do we really have that? Do we really know that? Like I said, we we all know about prayer. We all know we should pray, and, and a lot of times there's this difference between knowing and actually doing, or maybe even better yet, a better word would be being. Uh, you know, how we really have that living experience of prayer with the Lord every day, moment by moment. That's what's what needs to be primary. Well, let me go back to, to this. It says, for this pilgrim growth in the life of prayer is found as he seeks out spiritual mentors and guides who can serve as living witnesses to a life dedicated to prayer. Uh, this is a simple yet profound step you can take today to grow in your life of prayer. Who do you know in your life that has a robust and abiding prayer life? How can you intentionally seek them out and ask them to share their wisdom with you? If no one comes to mind, what, what steps can you take to begin seeking out wise men and women of prayer? Being so bold as to introduce yourself and ask them to share what they've learned with you so that your learning can move from an abstract, rational knowledge into a life fully devoted to our Lord. 
making this living experience, having this living experience of prayer uh, with the Lord, where it's just always, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of our life. And, and yes, there are uh, intense um, times of prayer, you know, but then there's also these moments throughout our day and throughout our life that we are, uh, uh, you know, going back to the Lord in, in prayer. Uh, I just think there's some really good stuff here. And I, I, I you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, yesterday was really helpful. I think today's is, this is, this is some of the best of, of what we've done on these uh, daily devotionals, I think, and, and important for us. We need a living experience, not just of prayer, but of, of the Lord in our daily lives. Well, let's uh, wrap up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to come together and to, to learn and to grow in our, in our prayer life. Lord, I just pray you would help us to do that on a daily basis, that we would be connected to you and have this living experience of prayer that they talk about here. Lord, we, we need that with you. You desire for us to have it. And, and, and Lord, we, we, we need it. So help us to do that. Help us to not just know about prayer or know your word or any of those kinds of things, but to experience you. Uh, you we, our lives are transformed in your presence. So Lord, we just ask that you would help us uh, in these ways. Lord, continue to be with, with uh, those that are sick today, those that are hurting, those that need encouragement. Lord, just ask your, your blessings on them. Uh, be near to them, encourage their hearts, those that have had loved ones pass away in recent days. Lord, we lift them to you. Uh, Lord, we just just uh, thank you for each one. Continue to be with us as, as we deal with COVID. We thank you for, for signs that things are a lot better. We just pray that I'll continue. But Lord, we just put it all in your hands. Uh, thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for uh, watching again today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, another, uh, another short devotional or another devotional here. But uh, you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Try to get outside if you can. Uh, I think spring really may be coming, we hope. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.